Guys, welcome back to Talking Nutrition. Today's episode 47 already, which is crazy to think about. I feel like we just started like last month or something. But today we're joined by my good friend, longtime friend, Anya, who uh, also was my client a little while ago. What's up, Anya? Hi, good to hear you. Today I want to, to kind of share Anya's story, right? So the stuff that you struggled with in the past, then how we kind of brought you to where you currently are. But then also what you do, because I think it's super cool, right? So we we often, you know, we work with people who are very active and who go running and all that. But you were definitely my only client who uh, does dog racing. And one thing that you mentioned that was really cool, I thought, is that you guys even have like a dog nutrition coach, <laughs> as well as your job, you know, <laughs> working with dogs as a, as a dog physio. I think it's super cool. So let's start with a little bit of background about you, right? So so what do you do for work, et cetera? Like workouts, what are your, your passions? Okay, um, I start with um, the business. So I work as a dog physiotherapist and as a lecturer for emergency medicine. So um, my roots are definitely um, at the human medicine. Um, I worked as a paramedic for a lot of years. Um, now I run my own business with my husband, um, which is called, uh, Canny X crew Adventures. So we do a uh, canny cross and sled dog sports and have a school for it to teach other people. And, um, yeah, what do I do for training now? Um, I started with running, um, totally fell in love with running. And then when it came to our nutrition coaching, um, and, um, yeah, another focus on um, sled dog sports, it really changed. So I do a lot of uh, weightlifting now and um, just a little bit of running <laughs> to do some cardio yeah. <laughs> as well. Um, and I love um, biking. So I'm always, always home at the trail. So if I'm outside, I'm happy. Yeah. Love that. That's, that's probably it. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I, I really liked seeing that change too, because I mean, obviously you still race, you still do your like endurance stuff, but that change kind of like going from most just doing cardio, right. And actually struggling with like body composition yeah. and with like super yeah. low calorie diets and stuff to then getting you to eat a lot more, which I know was kind of like a weird experience for you in the beginning. And then eventually like getting wow. more into weightlifting <laughs> and then now actually being in like a way different spot, you know? So let's actually go there. So yeah. be before we start working together, you said you were doing a lot of running, right? Uh, we just already kind of teased that you, you did a bunch of diets before that. Um, where were you at? Like before that, like, how were you feeling or what are your like past experiences with that? Um, before we started the nutrition coaching, um, I did a lot of running. So I was, um, out for running like 50 K about 20 to 50 K per, uh, per week. So, um, I think that's, uh, a lot of running, a lot of time uh, while running. And, um, I used some tracking apps. Um, I was never really into a lot of diets, but sometimes when I, I was uh, frustrated, I tried it with, um, tracking apps you can download on, uh, Apple store and the other stores, um, which kept me really low with calories, uh, which is, uh, kind of awful when you are outside running for like three hours <laughs> <laughs> and only can eat like 1,700 calories per day. And I was, um, always tired and hungry and exhausted and frustrated and couldn't stay really consistent to it. Um, because it didn't work um, for me. I was um, hungry. I couldn't sleep so well. And then I got up and was hungry again. And it was just just a, a big battle with myself because um, yeah, I was so low of calories and always hungry and never happy. And then a um, short time before I called you, there was a total breakdown um, where I had no energy left to go out running, um, and cried a lot of about it because, uh, running was 
the the thing that that made me really happy um and was my my me time my quality time uh with with my dog and uh, so then i saw a facebook post of you on i think that was the sign i needed <laughs> just to call you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we we've been friends for a while. Like I think, ten years now. Yeah. Um. And and the main thing was um, I was outside running for a long time, and I'm always on the move. So always running, walking the dogs. Um, when you work as a paramedic, you're on the go like the whole day, and um, you never saw the results um of all the training i did you never saw it and all other people were like oh you're doing sports okay wow you should look a little bit more lean or stuff like that and i was like "Uh, okay (laughs) well (laughs) thanks thanks then (laughs) bye yeah thank you (laughs) shit Um, it's it's very common though because i see that a lot too where and i feel like women more than men i mean both sides but especially women there's a lot of like very heavy emphasis on doing a lot of cardio the low calorie diets like really as a as an industry you know the fitness industry like we we got to do better as a whole you know because there's still so many people struggling with that where it's exactly how you said it right you actually feel like shit you can't sleep you have low energy you're doing so much running right so many kilometers yeah. with very few calories coming in but you don't see the results and that's just super frustrating you know and that just shows that that typical like eat less move more approach it just doesn't work you know we are not not long term mm-hmm. at least you know because at some point your body is just kind of like fed up with it so yeah that being said i wanted to bring something up because you mentioned this in one of your check-ins too or or, or recent chat and your family, right? You're, you're half Greek. A lot of yeah. stuff that you guys do is like <laughs> involved around Eating. food and especially like family <laughs> meetings and stuff. Yeah. So, so how was that? Like, how did you feel around like the social settings and going on vacation and et cetera, those kind of things like at that time? I tried to not enjoy food anymore. So, um, I enjoyed the family meetings, but when it came to, to food, I was like, Oh shit, I have to, I have to cut the cake out. And then, uh, you just, you just cut out everything you like, because, um, if you only can eat like 1,700 calories, you're, you're like totally fucked. (laughs) And, and when you're Greek, especially then (laughs) no more feta cheese and, (laughs) all the good stuff uh, all the sweets and and honey honey stuff yeah yeah you cut it out and my family recognized it um and asked me if something is wrong and i was like no i have to do it for training and um because they are not really into sports they they were like okay so it's just normal not to eat no it's it's hard to to combine that sometimes and and be very busy in terms of like trying to figure out your nutrition and doing your training and all that, but then trying to juggle that and, and also do well with your, you know, your family or your social settings. I feel like that's, that's a big um, struggle for a lot of people, which makes it even cooler that you're currently just killing it. Like now you're able to just dial it back in when you need to, you go on vacation, yeah. like you're able to have like the flexible moments and stuff. So tell me a little bit about the experience, like eating more, which I know is a weird thing for some people in the beginning, uh, for a lot of people. So how yeah. did that feel like kind of getting to eat more and then kind of like going from that point to where you are currently? Cause I think that that change is so huge. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is you, you made it pretty easy for me. Um, because we had our goals from week to week and you increased calories. So I 
was able to do it, but it was really strange to eat that much. I think we started with like uh, 500 calories more than I normally ate. Um, and I was like sitting down uh, at the table for, I think it was lunch. And I was like, shit, I have like 1,500 calories left. So when should I, should <laughs> I eat that? <laughs> it was just so much. Um, but it felt good because I instantly started to um, eat stuff I really missed a lot. So I did the 80% of good and whole food and the 20% of fun stuff. And I ate fun stuff. So uh, that was um, really good for the mindset. But I had moments where I was like, okay, so I can eat that. Okay. Eat that. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, so that for that thing first and, um, yeah, performance changed really fast. So I had a lot of more, uh, a lot of energy more left on the evenings. And, uh, uh, normally I went home after training and, went to bed because I had no energy left. And then I was like, okay, I can go out for a walk because weather is nice. Oh, maybe I will do some short bike ride. Um, yeah. So, um, my whole life changed because I had more energy and, um, my mindset was better and that was really cool. And now did you notice that? What, what? Go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. And I, um, the, past, the past year changed a lot of um, things when it came to training and, and performance. I uh, joined the German team for sled dog racing. So I was on international races like uh, European Championships and totally killed it. And the last season, last racing season was... Uh, a hell of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a because one. you notice that. Yeah, in a good way. But like, but you notice that, right? Like seeing like on the leaderboard, you were ranking like higher and higher just over time. Like as we progressed, that was so cool to hear from you because you were like, the race is going so well. I'm eating more, you know. And then you were also getting leaner. So it's kind of cool, right? To to be able to eat more and then just actually see that progress and that change and then like feel that change, yeah. you know. And, and you really saw the, the progress on my body. So the people came and were like, wow, you look great. Wow. You look so lean. Wow. You have muscles and, and stuff like that, which, which was really cool because, um, when you go, go out in, in summertime and, um, do a nice bike ride to the, to the lake and then stay there in bikini and the people are like, Oh, I think she's training really hard. <laughs> yeah. that's great it's it's nice to uh to just feel that confidence too you know and i mean you literally said like before people used to tell you like hey like i thought you trained a lot you know shouldn't you be <laughs> like lean or something you know <laughs> so that's a huge difference <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's of course it's it's less about what other people say and think because at the end of the day fuck what they say but like yeah it is cool to see that change, right? To where you feel so much better, you feel confident, and then you also get that confirmation from other people to where, okay, I know, like I, I definitely changed, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, even for your own mindset of, um, people recognize, um, the hard work you put into it. Um, and even if it comes from seeing the results of my body composition and, yeah, oh, that's pretty nice. Cool. Yeah, definitely. So you recently, so you, so you went a f on a vacation a few times. You recently went through like surgery and stuff. What do you do currently? So yeah. because you had multiple times where you kind of like stopped tracking, for example, you kind of like, you know, maintain a little bit more, more like, let's call it like intuitive. What do you do to kind of... Yeah get consistent, stay consistent, or just like pick things up when you feel the need to? Um, 
I think the coaching was um, so helpful with um, nutrition and what is good food and what um, amounts of food I can can take uh, or, or can, can I eat. Um, so the intuitive eating was um, less good, I think. <laughs> Can we call it a, a little balk? <laughs> I did some balking when when I was uh, at home after surgery. Yeah, <laughs> I did a short balking phase. Um, but I um, always find back to my routines. Um, so I track food again. I know how many calories I can eat. Um, and when I go back to maintenance after vacation or um christmas time or stuff like that i always need just one to two days um, to get back into the routines and then i stick to it perfectly actually so because it's so easy it, it just feels natural now for me to to have a look on good nutrition and um, weighing food sometimes so i i don't do it every day now in, in my cut phase, I'm, I'm cutting at the moment because um, I struggled after surgery and lay, lying on bed for like weeks with a wateriness and a little bit, um, I gained a little bit of fat, I think, but just a little bit. Um, so I'm cutting at the moment. Um, yeah, it turns out perfectly. Full of energy, a little bit hungry sometimes, but training goes really well. Um, it's always the same sleep training, enough food, enough of the right food, getting my steps, um, done pretty easy. <laughs> it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Like it actually like, well, now it's easy. So before it wasn't easy, but it is simple. And that's the thing. Like, so the things we, we work through, like you and me get going through those different phases. Like now you're actually at a place where you can just pick it up when you need to. You can use tracking as a tool to where you can do both with and without. And yeah. you know, kind of like, hey, I need to mostly just, you know, eat these foods and leave some room for the fun stuff. And then if I want to lose some fat, I know how to do that. Like, that's the ultimate goal because I think there's a lot of, and this goes back to like the diets, the meal plans, and those kind of things. There's a lot of stuff in the industry to where, you sign up, it's like a four or eight, whatever week diet and you lose some weight, but then what, you know? Um, and if there's, I guess there's a time and place for some stuff like that, but I don't think that it's going to be the, the ultimate solution to like learning how to do this yourself, you know? And that's why I think it's so cool because we're, we're still in touch and like, you're still killing it and you're still progressing. And, you know, both like body composition wise, like race wise, like, it's just really cool to see that to where we took you from not feeling great, shitty energy, kind of like a bit of like almost like avoiding behavior you know, around certain, you know, um, <laughs> social settings to now yeah. just like being in a great spot, you know? Yeah. So obviously you made a lot of changes yourself, but I kind of wanted to transition to the dogs. Cause I thought that was super interesting too. <laughs> so <laughs> how does that go? So obviously you're racing with dogs. Tell us a little bit about that also in terms of kind of like what you do there with their nutrition and how you train and those kind of things. I think it's super interesting. I, I, I know you will, you would love it that when I, when I told you that uh, we have a dog nutrition coach as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so um even the the dog nutrition is a thing you can you can read a lot of it on the internet and I was like okay hmm, the dog looks not that lean as he might do because we train a lot so we 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 had the same issues I think <laughs> um but um, he always loved to eat and he ate a lot. Um, but we changed a little bit of the 
food. So we went back from um, mixing up uh, like kibbles and um, meat, um, use another food. Um, when it comes to dog nutrition, you are always looking at um, proteins and fat, but um, a lot of people forget the carbohydrates when it comes to dog food. And we do sprint sport. So we have short distances, short time um, of racing or running. Um, so we um, kept the carbohydrates higher, which brought more energy, um, faster regeneration, and a faster dog at all. So he looks like a bodybuilder now. <laughs> <laughs> really really lean and he's really fit and very fast so oh <laughs> cool to that. see as well <laughs> it's super cool yeah it's it's cool yeah. it's funny too because yeah. so so we have cats now i'm like i'm also used to having dogs uh but then obviously you know right now we uh, we live in our apartment so we can't have a dog in here at least but we have two cats and during the winter especially when we have like no sunlight you know we have one who goes outside, yeah. the other one is always inside, but they don't move that much. <laughs> so so the cat who usually yeah. goes outside, he hasn't for, I mean, he, he goes, but it's very short, but he hasn't gone much for a while. So he gained a little bit of weight. So we actually have him on like a diet <laughs> now to, <laughs> to where... to where I'm now like weighing the cat's food and like, like we're spreading it out during the day. And But it's really funny to see because... <laughs> I'm also doing like, I'm like doing his weigh-ins and stuff too, you know, to get the average <laughs> kind of like to see, <laughs> but like, it's, uh, how, it's how funny, like, you, you know, cause, <laughs> oh, he hates it because, <laughs> because he, um, he's looking for food the whole time, which kind of like, I do feel bad for him, but we're getting to a place where it's almost like good, you know, and then we'll move him back. Um, but we're on like, you know, Those like more, I think we're like soon, higher okay. fiber, like lower calorie. Yeah, so like we'll we'll bring it back up to maintenance, but it's funny. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, like it's it makes sense though, right? Like it, it makes sense. It's totally the same, but it's just funny to like now like having to help my cat with that too, <laughs> to where he just he just didn't want to go outside anymore in the snow in the dark, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so are you are you doing some progression photos yeah. with him as well? <laughs> Or measurements <laughs> no with with uh, with, <laughs> with, uh, with the cat it's just like i get on the scale and then i get on the scale with him and then i look at the difference you know and then i just kind of see if it's working but it's it's been working so it's uh, it's all good so um i think it's it's just cool to see though right because i feel like we're very much used and they're going back to you with the dogs like i think we're very much used to having dogs as pets right and i've seen that here too where we um there's like a big dog sledding farm over here a farm like place i guess and people go dog sledding and sometimes people fe feel bad for them because it's not what we're used to and they're like in in you know the um the little dog houses outside but they're huskies like they live outside you know but like dogs actually re really enjoy that right like the racing yeah they they totally love it. It's it's their passion. They are really really born to run. So um, when it comes to summertime, um, we have it really cold in the morning, like uh, two degrees, and you still recognize that the dogs want run, uh, want to go outside running, um, and want to be trained. And I hope the temperatures will rise a little bit. They will get a little bit lower with training um, when it gets warmer, but you always recognize cold temperatures. So they get up, the eyes got to open, and then they are like, okay, we can go outside running. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. But in summertime, we will just it's um, relax a little bit. The dogs will relax, and I will do some training for the next racing season. Love that. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. So, uh, 
I mean, first of all, thank you for for coming on as well and and sharing some of your story. It's just cool to see how you progress yourself and then how that's even played into your racing and then just everything else. It's just super cool to see that and to follow you and to just see that you're just in a good spot now. You know, you're able to maintain, you can create results and you just kind of know what to do. And I think that's amazing. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, well, thanks to you. <laughs> Happy to help, you know. <laughs> so that being said, um, if you want, we can we can link your uh, your company as well in the show notes. Uh, if anyone in Germany is looking for a dog physio, right? So we'll do that. Is there anything uh, that you wanted to share with the listener? Otherwise, just get your ass up and change something, because it will change your whole life. <laughs> let's end with that because i think that's awesome you just got to do something you just got to take action you will change your life it's just maybe going to take some time but exactly like you said you just got to do it you just got to start and then you'll get there yeah nothing great comes easy <laughs> amazing awesome so to the listener as always thank you for listening and we will talk to you again next week